Stop where you are. Drop the knife. Casey, taser. Stop or you're going to get shot. Ooh, hi everyone. Donut here. Where do we start with this one? <laughs> We're going to be taking a look at another incompetent female officer today. Not saying there aren't worthless male officers out there or that all female officers are incompetent. That's not what I said. There's just been a lot of cases I've covered in the past and especially recently where a lot of female officers are involved. Everything that could have went wrong in today's story that we're going to be covering went wrong. This is going to be one of them shorter videos, so I do apologize to the people who actually like my videos. And I just want to say congratulations to the people who click on my videos and, and then hear me talking and get mad. Oh, Hi everyone, yeah. Donut here. Sorry for the last two weeks where I held it. Okay, where do we start on this one? I first came across this video yesterday after another Twitter bro who posts like raw police footage, emergency footage, put this up. And he said, potentially disturbing, a Chicago lawyer has filed a federal wrongful death lawsuit against the city of Morris for the September 29th death of 40-year-old Olivia Schwab, who was shot multiple times while running towards Officer Nick Pimpinella, gripping a nine-inch long chef's knife. So I read that and I say, who's going to file a lawsuit against an officer? who shot someone that was running at them with a nine inch chef's blade. That's a knife. That's a big fucking knife. And how many times have we seen people get killed with baby knives? Literally knives held by babies. Let me see what you have. I'm going. No. A little poke in the right place and suddenly you're in the forever box. That's what she said. <laughs> What I'm saying is that a blade of any size is definitely a deadly weapon. You guys remember that stabbing I covered a while back at that mall where the two dudes got into a fight. One of them got a little, just a tiny little poke in the neck and he bleeds out within like, I don't know, 30 seconds on the ground. That one was so bad, I had to blur the entire screen. Okay, look at these fucking ads, dude. Holy sh**. The Daily Mail. One, two, three, four, five. Six. It's slowing down my computer that has a 4090 Ti in it. Graphic content warning. Horrific moment. A young man is stabbed to death in a bloody food court brawl as a 20 year old is charged with murder. I can't show all of this. If you look right here, the guy has, I don't know, a three inch blade. It's not the size that counts. It's how you use it. I don't know if you saw that right there all he did was a boop and i'm going to show the video it's going to be highly blurred but it, it doesn't take very long for this guy to fall down and he's dead <laughs> point being even the smallest edged weapons are very deadly edged weapons are instruments of deadly force and whenever possible, you must be prepared to use your ultimate force option if necessary. Back to our main story, why did that city have a lawsuit against it for wrongful death? After watching the video of our incident today, I kind of found out why. Which, by the way, the fully uncut version of what we are about to cover is up on my Raw Police channel. It's called Donuts Raw Police Footage. 40-year-old Olivia Schwab's son is suing the city of Morris for wrongful death because, according to reports, police were called to an apartment complex for a mental health emergency. Ms. Schwab Bob had been in a mental health facility undergoing the care of professionals. And during this time period when the incident happened, she was starting to transition back into her own apartment. Suicide counselors called 911 and said that she was in her apartment threatening suicide and had armed herself with a large knife. That's a hairy call to respond to, so be very alert and be ready to be attacked by a idle person with a knife. In order to get a lay of the land, the officers park a couple hundred feet away from the apartment where the woman is, survey the area, and then start walking towards the call. If I'm not mistaken, it's this building. 1863? Okay. Right, you go non-lethal. Okay, you heard that right. The male officer says to the female officer, you go non-lethal. The male officer sees the woman standing in the doorway of her home and automatically starts forming a plan. If there's a knife involved, a knife is a deadly weapon. As per common police training, you always match lethal force with lethal force. But there are a couple factors where you don't have to go lethal versus lethal with a knife. Sometimes there can be another police officer on scene that can provide the non-lethal while you provide the lethal cover or vice versa. So the male officer wants to take lethal cover. He tells 
allows the female officer to take non-lethal. She has her taser. Maybe there will be a chance for the female officer to tase the lady, thus saving her life. In this one, they have longer than enough time to triangulate where they are standing and see if a taser can be deployed. If the suspect gets too close to the non-lethal officer, the lethal officer can just shoot the suspect. Let's continue. Uh, you go non-lethal. I miss. Miss, drop the knife. Drop the knife. Drop the, drop, stop, stop coming towards me. Stop coming towards me. Stop where you are, miss. Stop where you are. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. I don't know if you noticed, but this entire time, the female officer still has not pulled out her taser. Even after triangulating a great angle where if shots have to be fired, the female officer won't be in the line of fire of the male officer. You go non-lethal. I miss. Miss, drop the knife. Drop the knife. Drop the, drop, stop, stop coming towards me. Stop coming towards me. Stop where you are, miss. Stop where you are. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. Drop the knife, miss. Casey, taser. Stop it. Stop it, you're gonna get shot. Shots fired, Granny. 752, step it up. God damn it. Handcuff her. Get that knife away. Face. Face. The female officer, for almost that entire time, did not pull her taser. Even after the male officer told her directly, pull out your taser. She was just wandering around the sidewalk like she's waiting on her f***ing order at McDonald's. And when she finally gets her taser out, even when the woman with the 9-inch chef's blade starts running at the male officer, she still doesn't tase her. Not that I'm saying the taser is an end-all, there could have been a, a chance where the taser actually did work and the woman goes down and they could have cuffed her. There could have been a chance. Casey, taser! Stop it! Stop it, you're gonna get shot! <laughs> In my opinion, it looks like it was a clear-cut side by cop. The male officer did what he had to do because she was within 10 feet of him and running at him. And then I don't know why some of the comments online were saying, well, she was holding the knife downward. I don't know, you mean downward like that? Yeah, that's how she was holding the knife. Like, even after the lady was shot, the female officer still standing back there like fucking Will Ferrell and Talladega Nights. I'm not sure what to do with my hand. Uh, be good just to hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah, great. Lord have mercy. Let me know what you think about this one in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. YouTube only tells, I think it's like 15% of people who subscribe to me that I have a video. If you want to help support the channel, you can go on over to donutoperator.com. Follow me on every other social media platform or buy some super sweet merch. And as always, please have a fantastic day. Bye.